If you're looking to pick up a laptop for graphic design, photography, or digital art, then you've picked the perfect time as the 2024 laptops are starting to come in and the 2023 laptops are starting to go on sale. And let me tell you that the 2023 laptops have shown some great performance. And what I can see of 2024 is the focus of the chipset companies is going to be on efficiency rather than performance increases. So if you're not looking to you know, maximize battery life all the time, then choosing 2024 will not be the best choice because it won't be the most price efficient choice in my opinion, where you can go ahead and get some great deals on 2023 laptops. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is talk you through the specs so you can know how to pick the right laptop for your specific needs. Then I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through from the budget category all the way up to the high end and all the practical applications of going high end as we work through the video. And of course, explaining the specs is going to help you make the right purchase for your specific needs. So it won't just be based off of, oh, Ben says this laptop is good. You'll say, oh, Ben says this laptop is good and now I know why. So that is the whole point of this video. At the end of this video, you should know exactly what you need for graphic design, digital art, or photography. So let's go ahead and dive into the budget category and we'll begin to explain the specs as we look at these laptops. Now here you can see one of the most affordable laptops is around the $650 price point. Some of you might say, Ben, how is that affordable? Well, I would say that this is the most affordable laptop that will satisfy the needs of a digital artist, graphic designer, or a photographer. If you go any more budget friendly, you may have lower performance and therefore might end up spending more money because you'll buy a computer, find out it's not enough performance, and then end up having to buy another computer. And so I like to keep at the Ryzen 5 7530U. Now, if you're saying, okay, well, what about maybe like last year's Ryzen 6000 series? Maybe I could get a better price on the 2022 model. That is a good option. You could get the Ryzen 5 6600U, or you could even get something like the i5-1240P from Intel, and those would be great processors that are a few generations old now that the 14th gen and uh, Ryzen 8000, as well as Intel Core Ultra are coming out. Good heavens, there's so many SKUs to keep track of, and that will help you make the right person decision. Yes, you could go down to 2022, save a little extra money. Looking at the Asus VivaBook 16, great option for anywhere from $600 to $700, $800. Checking out the Asus ZenBook OLED 14. This comes with the latest Intel Core Ultra 7, 155H, and Arc graphics. This would be a great laptop for digital art and photography. That graphics processor will be super helpful in helping to process raw photos, helping process multiple layers inside of Photoshop. That extra little kick in the graphics processor will really help in Photoshop and Lightroom. Better graphics processing um, for those apps. Now you can get this laptop with anywhere from eight to 32 gigs of RAM. I'd recommend it from the 16 to 32 gig range because Photoshop really likes RAM. The thing is, if you have multiple layers inside of Photoshop as a digital artist or photographer or even graphic designer, you can start to bottleneck your system if you don't have enough RAM because Photoshop really likes RAM. So that's why if you're looking at this lineup and you're seeing eight gigs of RAM, honestly, that's not my recommendation overall. If you're on a budget, eight gigs is a great starting point. It's a great minimum. Do not get a laptop with four gigs of RAM for Photoshop. It will barely even run. What I would recommend is eight at a minimum, 16 recommended, 32 optimized. So what is RAM for those of you who are new here? Random access memory. Basically, every time you open an application, your system will pull from the random access memory to run that application. So let's say step one, you open Google Chrome. That's gonna use anywhere from one to two gigs of RAM. But oh, before you even open an application, your computer with background tasks can use anywhere from a half to a full gig of RAM. So right there, just by opening Google Chrome, we're at about three to four gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and open Photoshop. Depending on the complexity of your tasks, you're gonna use anywhere from six to eight gigs of RAM on average. Let's go ahead and listen to some music. All right, we've now added another one to two gigs of RAM. So right there, you're already over the eight gig threshold, and that's why I recommend 16 gigs of RAM. So you don't bottleneck your system and end up running it and end up slowing down or even crashing. 
Now that the apps have gotten more robust and complex, four gigs of RAM back when I started in graphic design school 15 years ago, four gigs of RAM would have actually been plenty because the programs were not as robust. But as I moved up through my graphic design school, I went for both my undergrad and my master's. By the time I finished undergrad, eight gigs was de facto standard for minimum. By the time I graduated grad school, 16 was definitely my recommended. So with that in mind, choose wisely. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is looking at the panel, the screen. As you can see for these two first budget laptops on the lineup, you have 64 and 67 sRGB. That's the color gamut range that the screen can reproduce. So you have color accuracy, Delta E, and you have range, sRGB, DCI-P3, and Adobe RGB. So the sRGB is the smallest range, followed by Adobe, followed by DCI-P3. Now, if you want full videos about color gamut range and color accuracy, I have filmed an entire series in tech terms called Color Accuracy. Go on over to my channel, find the tech term series, Color Accuracy, watch through that, give you full education. But keep an eye on the DCI-P3 and the sRGB as we're going through these videos, because that'll help you pick the best laptop for your needs if you need color accurate reproductions within your work. So the price will kind of increase as you see better color gamut ranges. Now, one thing to note, OLED screens are going to consistently have better color gamut ranges than their IPS counterparts. Now, one of my favorite laptops on this lineup is going to be the Lenovo Yoga 7i. It's going to have a two-in-one capability, fold over, great touch screen, great pen connectivity. Some B-roll coming up on the screen from the Lenovo Yoga 9i. That is its older brother. That's a fantastic laptop. I love the build quality, usability, battery life. Uh, my children have been using this laptop as well for about six to eight months and they don't treat it wisely. I looked at it recently and I thought, what is that on the keyboard? It was like somebody spilled apple juice or like a sucker on the keyboard and it's just plugging right along. So great durability for a uh, five-year-old to uh, two-year-olds. Uh, so I think you're gonna be able to be just fine with the laptop. All right, moving forward, looking at the HP Envy 2-in-1, this is the 14-inch model, love this laptop, and it comes at a great price point. So you have the i7-1355U and 16 gigs of RAM. The reason you can save some money on this laptop, check out the panel. We do not have an OLED panel on this laptop. This is the budget-friendly 67% sRGB panel. So if you're okay with a little less color accuracy and you wanna save some money, the HP NV2 in 1 can be a great choice for you. My de facto favorite laptop as a graphic designer and a photographer would be an Apple. Uh, personally, I just think for graphic design and photography, for the lack of feature, for the lack of extras you need, right? That's kind of the big thing where it comes in for like digital artists, video editors, 3D modelers. I recommend Windows almost through and through. But when it comes to graphic design and photography, we don't need a lot of extras, right? Like it's, we just need a simple interface. We need a powerful laptop. We need to have good battery life because we're on the go as creators, uh, whether it be photographer or graphic designer. Digital artists I find more have like their home office or their in office where they have their Wacom tablet and their sketch pad and like they have all this stuff. Graphic designer, photographer, we need like a laptop, and a camera, like that's all we really need. And so Apple makes a great argument for great battery life, great efficiency, great performance. Now for this Apple MacBook Air M2, <clears throat> you can get away with eight gigs of RAM. The reason being is the new SOC chips, the RAM is closer situated to the chip compared to previous models. It's not a separate module and system on the, on the motherboard. So eight gigs actually acts like 16, 16 actually acts like 32, et cetera. Um, so that's where I would definitely take a look at the Apple MacBook Air 13 inch or 15 inch. What I did for the model I purchased is I got a 512 gig drive upgrade. I didn't wanna get 256 because as soon as you add photos or design files to a laptop, you then fill up that storage very quickly. So I would do a minimum of 512 gigs of SSD. And if you're a big multitasker, I would consider upgrading to 16 gigs. At that point, you're gonna be at about a $2,000 laptop. A little expensive for some people on a budget, um, and you could actually get uh, the new M3 Pro for around $2,000, which I think that one comes with 16 gigs of RAM as standard. But for me, I loved the thin and light portability of this 15 inch Air, and it has great performance. It's so rigid. I took this to CES with me recently, threw it in my backpack, which was stuffed in with a bunch of other camera gear, and it just held out like a champ. It's so rigid, so durable. Definitely something I'm, I really like having as a part of my tool set. Next up will be the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 
Pro 360 and uh, 360. The really cool thing about the Pro 360 and the 360 is they have the same CPU. If you want a 14 inch laptop OLED for a little bit less money, you can get Book 3 Pro. I'll link them below. I like the Book 3 Pro because it's a clamshell. It's not a two-in-one. So if you don't want that two-in-one functionality, you'll save a little bit of money, have a better form factor because it's a little bit smaller, still have a great screen, still have great performance. These come standard with 16 gigs of RAM, OLED display, so nice and color accurate, great laptops. These are like, if you like are considering a MacBook Pro, but you still want to stay Windows, the Samsung Galaxy Books are awesome. Now, one of my favorite laptops for the past couple of years is going to be the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13. Now, as a designer, photographer, you don't really need a dedicated GPU. So that makes this really sleek, thin and light ultrabook with a Ryzen 9 7940HS processor and 16 gigs of RAM, a really great buy at around $1,250. Because you don't need that dedicated GPU, you save the money, it's thin and light, it's very professional appearance, and it's got great performance. I mean, this is just awesome. On top of that, if you're somebody who would eventually wanna have some GPU performance, it comes with this ROG mobile port. Basically, you can plug in a full-size dedicated RTX 4090 GPU or the Radeon equivalent RX GPU into this laptop and have full performance for video editing, 3D modeling, whatever it might be. This to me is like the best kept secret in the mobile thin and light PC world. Um, it's like, oh my goodness, it's just, it's so powerful. It's so efficient. It has great battery life. It is a little more expensive because it's more of the premium aesthetic, magnesium alloy, thin and light, but I just can't recommend it enough. Compared to something like the Dell XPS 13, which is actually the next up on my list, I'd go for this all day long. I think the Dell XPS 13 is really cool. It's just not as functional and practical. This has so much practicality to it. It's not as slick, sleek and sexy, but it's very like dark and assassin, creed like low key. I don't know, I just really like it. I like it above the Dell XPS 13. Now, Dell XPS 15 is a fantastic laptop. It's actually the laptop I started my channel on. Great build quality. I love the aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and then carbon fiber keyboard deck. Beautiful laptop. Can't get enough of that laptop as far as just the nostalgia it holds for me. It, it was, when I bought it, it was the premium Windows laptop. I wasn't aware of Razer at the time when I bought it. And it was just like the professional alternative to a MacBook Pro for a Windows laptop. And it was at the time where Apple laptops didn't have the performance that I wanted them to have. Um, so I went ahead and went for the Dell XPS 15 and I was not disappointed. And still to this day, I recently reviewed the latest Dell XPS 15 a few months ago, and it's still just a champion of a laptop. All right, next up on the lineup is going to be the HP Victus and the HP Omen. These are going to be laptops that if you are a gamer and you wanna still do some design work, these are the top picks from HP if you're a gamer, but you're also graphic design, digital art photography. I would personally choose the Omen. Both you can get pretty good color accurate screens on. The Omen's gonna be a little bit more of a premium laptop. I do like the Victus um, because they did do a redesign this year that made it Though it is in the budget category, a more premium feel. Top cover and bottom cover have these rounded edges. They were a lot sharper in previous models. And so I just think that out of all the budget laptops available, whether it be the Acer Nitro, whether it be like the MSI Pulse or the Lenovo Lock, this to me has the best materials used and build quality. I really like the Victus for sure. Now the HP Omen had a complete redesign in 2023 New ledge, aluminum top cover, aluminum bottom cover, good ventilation, great port selection, and it's much thinner and lighter than years past. So the HP Omen and the HP Victus are really top picks for me, though the HP Omen was not a top pick in 2021 and 2022, because it was just more of a chunky gaming laptop. They really refined it over the past couple of years. Next up on the list, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Lenovo Legion Slim 5. If you are looking for something thin and light, an OLED display, so great color accuracy, you also are a gamer, or you're a graphic designer, digital artist, photographer that happens to do some video editing as well, you have plenty of performance here with the GPU. 
And that's a great time to talk about why a GPU would be practical inside of a laptop for graphic design, digital art, and photography. People ask a lot of times, okay, I'm doing graphic design. Do I need a graphics processing unit? No, you do not need a graphics processing unit to do graphic design. In fact, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, even Photoshop don't really utilize the GPU. However, if you're somebody who's using multiple monitors, like myself, I have four monitors currently hooked up to my system. A GPU is absolutely essential to making sure that your computer runs efficiently. Here's the reason why. If you have four monitors hooked up to a system, a laptop or a desktop PC that does not have a dedicated GPU, you're going to highly stress the CPU. The CPU does have integrated graphics. However, it's not built to both run multiple monitors and run all of your central processing through that CPU. You want to have both a dedicated GPU and a CPU. What it will do is it will take the weight off of the CPU so you can run all of your design art photography tasks on the CPU and the GPU can take a hold of the tasks it does very well. So in that regard, if you are somebody who has a lot of external monitors you want for your workflow, I would recommend having a laptop with a dedicated GPU. Or if you're a gamer, or if you're gonna do 3D modeling, or if you're gonna do motion design or After Effects, or if you're gonna be a video editor, right? These extra things along with graphic design, digital art, and photography. Now, which one? An RTX 4050 is a great start for somebody who's doing some light video editing and has a couple monitors hooked up to their laptop. 4060 is for somebody who has a little bit more aggressive video editing. Maybe you're doing 4K or even 6K video editing and you have those two or three monitors hooked up. Now from there, if you go to the 4070, the 4080, the 4090, that's people who are doing 3D modeling, heavy motion design, very graphics, motion graphics intensive tasks or 3D modeling intensive tasks where you have very complex models you're building or architecture or video game design or uh, even uh, automobile design, right? Stuff where you're in CAD type software, okay? If you have questions, definitely comment below. Either I, myself, or somebody in the community can help answer those questions for you. Now, as far as these processors are concerned, you're gonna see mainly from this point, H series processors, right? So these are gonna be gaming laptops with high performing processors, which means you're going to have great performance, but lower battery life than something like the Lenovo Yoga Book right here. This has a lower TDP processor. It's a great laptop. We're gonna talk about it in just a minute. Something like the Lenovo Yoga 7i i5 1240p or i7 1360p processor great very efficient 10 to 11 hours of battery life right the apple macbook air m2 i can get roughly 12 to 15 hours of battery life with normal work and normal brightness on this laptop so again you sacrifice efficiency for performance as you move up into these higher end laptops all right the next we're going to take a look at here is going to be the asus republic of gamers zephyrus g14 from 2022 and 2023. The reason I go all the way back to 2022 is because this to me was the gold standard in 2022. They hit the nail on the head with the Ryzen 9 6900HS and RX 6700S GPU. The price point is insane right now. If you can still find these, I will link one up in the description below if you can find one. They are rare to find because they're two years old now, but the performance is still on par with almost the RTX 4070 version from 2023. I would literally put on par a $1,900 laptop and about, well, if you can find them on sale, a $1,000 laptop. It was just so optimized in 2022. 2023 came out and the 4060, which was the same price as its previous model, wasn't even close as far as performance was concerned. So that's why I say 2022 and 2023 uh, is because the 2022 model was so amazing. All right, next is the HP Envy 16. Basically, this is the premium version, the aluminum version, the creator version of the HP Omen. It's gonna be an all aluminum silver laptop. It's gonna have very similar components, very similar GPU, CPU, RAM. It's just more of the creator version. Usually they come with a more color accurate display and a little more focus in the marketing towards creators. But honestly, it's just about the same laptop when you dig into it. Other than the new HP Omen coming with the ledge, when in the past it did not come with the ledge. So it's trying to splice out the differences there. The MSI Creator Pro Z16 HX Studio, great for performance, a pretty big price tag because it has very high performing components like an i9 1300 HX, RTX 4070 or RTX A2000, 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. One thing I haven't liked about the Z series is they have small trackpads. So honestly, what I would do is I would wait up for the MSI Creator 16 
AI, much better trackpad, great components, and a great display. All right, moving on to the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2. This one really impressed me. So in the past, this laptop was only available at 16 gigs of RAM. I discussed with a couple of artists on my channel about the bottleneck that happens in Photoshop. If you're an artist, working in tons and tons of different layers inside of Photoshop. And that is that your RAM starts to bottleneck your system. They now offer this laptop in up to 64 gigs of RAM with either an RTX A2000, which would be great for 3D modeling, or up to an RTX 4060, which would be great for both gaming, video editing, motion design. Now the price tag is not anything to wink at. It is about $3,299 at the top spec out, but you're getting a really robust system. You're getting a really cool tablet feature that flips out. So you can work on it like an easel. So this is basically what Acer hoped to do with the Concept D3 so long ago, and then they gave up on it. Microsoft said, yeah, we're gonna keep working at this and figure it out, and they really have nailed it. It's a great system. HP Spectre X360, definitely my favorite premium laptop from HP. I've reviewed one recently on the channel, so I have a full dedicated review if you wanna check it out. And any of the laptops that I have here, and honestly, most of the laptops in this video, I've fully reviewed. So you can head on over to my channel, check those out if you wanna get more details on the laptops. And of course, links in the description below if you wanna check the live pricing of any of the laptops here we're covering. Now, the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. This is the dual screen laptop from Lenovo. So the biggest complaint I have with this is that they used a CPU without a dedicated GPU for a two monitor laptop with the aim at creators. And what I found with this laptop is that it didn't have the performance I anticipated. It's underperformed in Photoshop. It was a little bit glitchy. I did not like the trackpad that, the trackpad that was integrated on the screen even though they did give you a keyboard included and, and they did their best, I just thought it was a decent first attempt. Now, looking at the Asus ZenBook Duo, that is a laptop that I recently reviewed at CES 2024. Should come out of my channel already or around the time of this video. That was impressive. Now, I didn't get a full chance to benchmark the performance. However, it's gonna come with the latest Intel Core Ultra 9, which I'm hoping with the integrated art graphics, improved graphics, brand new chipset, we're gonna see the mishaps that happened in this one, which was glitchy performance, low performance, and um, really just poor trackpad, redeemed on that laptop because it comes with an entire keyboard and trackpad that you can literally set onto the laptop or set below the laptop. It's just so functional. 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, 100% DCI-P3, it just makes so much more sense. They just took it to the next level compared to this first attempt from Lenovo Yoga. And as you guys know, I'm a huge Lenovo fanboy, but I'm willing to put this laptop down because it needs improvement. And I totally believe in that. Okay, the next laptop is gonna be the Lenovo Legion Pro 5. Here we go, right here. So this is going to be the de facto gaming laptop. So if you want the best bang for buck laptop, this is going to be the one. We're gonna have great performance. You know, have a solid color accurate screen at 97% sRGB, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM and RTX 4060 to 4070, all at around 1400 to $1,800, depending on the time of year you buy it and the sales that you see. If you ask me, Ben, what is the best all around laptop in 2023? You could only have one laptop. I would choose the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. Battery life, performance, efficiency, decently on the go friendly, great screen color gamut range. It just really hits all the boxes. And if you go ahead and turn this on your more efficient mode, you can get up to seven to nine hours of battery life. Um, more consistently towards the seven, occasionally up towards the nine. Um, but for how much performance it has, the flexibility truly is an amazing laptop. Now, if I had to choose a second best all around laptop, it would be the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16. If I'm specifically thinking about artists, photographers, designers, the reason is it has a touch screen. It has the performance you need with an i9 processor. It has an RTX 4070, 16 gigs of RAM. Where it sh where I struggled to be like, yes, that is my full recommendation is the price point. It's gonna be anywhere from 1749 up to $2,700. Where the Lenovo, Lenovo Legion Pro 5i kind of caps out around the $1,800 price point until you lean into like the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i or the Lenovo Legion 7i or 9i, right? So that's why I think the Legion Pro hits the best mark because it's such good bang for buck, where the X16 is the best all around laptop for creators um, who want performance and flexibility. It's just more expensive. Now let's go ahead and look at the MacBook Pro 14 and 16. As you can see here, I only list the M3 Pro. 
It's because I believe that the M3 Max is fully overkill for graphic designers, photographers, and digital artists. If you're getting into 3D modeling or video editing, I would be open to saying yes, the Max would be performance you might need to use. However, the M3 Pro, you're never gonna use that performance. I mean, it's got plenty of performance. And for me, if I was gonna buy that laptop, I would say, sure, I'll get the M3 Pro, and then I'm gonna upgrade to 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. Like if I really wanna like spend, just I just wanna spend more money, I would spend it where it matters, and that's adding more RAM to the system, or maybe more storage. So maybe the perfect configuration for a graphic designer for me would be M3 Pro 14 inch model, one terabyte of SSD, and 32 gigs of RAM. That would be like the de facto perfect laptop. Um, now, if you're gonna go, if you're deciding between M2 and M3, go M3. If you already have an M1 Pro, stick with your M1 Pro because M2 to me was like a lag year when they just had to release something and the performance increase was like 15 to 20% tops. And so it made no sense to me to make that upgrade. So either find a refurbished M1 Pro, which I think you can probably find them for like 11 or $1,200 or go ahead for the M3. Now, if you can't find a refurbished M1 and you wanna save some money, then go for the M2 because those will probably be on sale. But my point is from M1 to M2, there was not a big performance increase. The really big performance increase is from M1 to M3. Hope that all makes sense. Okay, Razer Blade 16 or 18. These are overpriced yet beautiful laptops. You can get the same amount of performance in something like Lenovo Legion Slim 7 or Slim 5. However, you're not gonna have the premium Razer Blade aesthetic. Uh, that is about what I have to say about those. They are beautiful, they are color accurate, they have great performance. To me, they just have never been worth the price. They scratch easily in my opinion, they are terrible for fingerprints. They have good performance, but not incredible performance. So to me, the price is always, it's always too much. It's always an exaggeration of what I think the true value of the laptop is. Compared to something like the Asus ProArch StudioBook Pro 16 OLED, something that has 80% of the build quality and aesthetic but it has more performance and better features. So this is something I've talked about for the past two years in these lineup videos. The dial is truly a game changer in efficiency. You look at the comment section of these videos, ask anybody who has it. The dial is awesome. Scroll through different tools, Scroll, make your brush size larger or smaller just with the scroll of a scroll bar button dial. Click, spin, click, multiple click buttons here along the bottom. Not a clickable trackpad. My one gripe about this laptop is not a clickable trackpad. It makes sense for 3D modeling, motion design, any sort of architecture program, but it doesn't make sense for digital artists, graphic designers, photographers, and video editors. But that's something we have to deal with. You have an i7 processor in this laptop. You have up to an RTX 4080. I recommend the 4060 or 4070 for graphic designers. Um, you don't need that much overkill. Honestly, the 4060 would be great, and you can get them for around $2199, sometimes even less, and it has loaded features. OLED display, Pretty solid battery life. It's a great laptop, great build quality, thin and light with a large display, a lot of port connectivity with an SD card reader. It's just great, it is great. I would say this would be my number one creator recommended laptop. If the Legion was the best laptop of the year for anybody, this would be the best laptop for creators. It's just, to me, it's the, the gold standard for creators. Next up will be laptops coming your way in 2024 that you might want to keep an eye on that matter for you as a creator. First and foremost, the Lenovo Legion 7i. To me, it's their aim at creators. It has a 100% DCI-P3 IPS display, has terabyte of storage, it has 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 4070, and an i9-14900HX. Plenty of performance, build quality, the right screen for the job. That's the one to be looking at as a creator. Now, if you're on a little bit more of a budget, the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i will still be a great pick, but in that regard, you might as well get this 2023 model for a better price because you're not gonna see that much upgrade except for the DCI-P3 color accuracy, but is it worth it to you? That's really the question. Um, it does come with 100% DCI-P3 color accuracy in the 2024 model, the 2023 does not. So it's a choice you have to make. Next up, Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i. This is one that is thinner and lighter than something like the Lenovo Legion 7i, but it's totally geared towards creators. It's gonna have a 100% DCI-P3 mini LED display, one terabyte of SSD, up to 64 gigs of RAM, first time we're ever seeing that in a Yoga product. RTX 4060 to 4070, matched with an Intel Core Ultra 185H. Really, really great laptop to keep an eye out for. Saw it at CES, had my hands on it. Stellar looking machine. Can't wait to see what the performance will give us. Now, if you're looking for something budget friendly, but on the go friendly, 
Check out the MSI Cyborg 14. It's gonna have a great CPU. It's gonna have a great GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of SSD, big win from MSI giving all their laptops one terabyte this year in 2024 and 100% DC IP3 IPS display. So it's like budget friendly, but great color accuracy for creators. It's a stellar combination. This is the laptop I was mentioning earlier as the one to look out for if you're wanting to get into more of a pro series laptop from MSI. This is the MSI Creator 16 AI. This has the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H with an RTX from a 4060 all the way up to a 4090. Or if you're somebody who does 3D modeling and graphic design, digital art, or photography, you can get it in an NVIDIA RTX A5000, which is the best GPU for 3D modeling and architecture. Up to 64 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and 100% sRGB on their mini LED display. Okay. <clears throat> Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyr is G16 and G14. The biggest difference between these models besides the screen size is the different CPUs that they decided to equip it with. We have an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H for the 16, and then they decided to go with the Ryzen 9 8945HS for the 14. We're gonna see which one ends up being the better pick. I really like that they did that this year from a creator and reviewer's perspective. We might be pissed off though from a buyer's perspective, if that Intel Core Ultra does not prove to be as capable as Intel is hoping this year. I am very bullish, I'm very hopeful. I believe in what Intel's doing with their AI, kind of pushing AI into our personal devices so that we don't have to share our AI into the cloud and lose our creative domain. If you've yet to watch the full review of Intel Core Ultra that I did at CES, definitely click the link at the end of this video, check that out. It's worth your time. It explains why Intel Core Ultra and AI for creators is a big deal in the coming future. Okay, definitely consider watching that video. It's a, it's, I haven't put as much work into a video and had as much fun as well as learned so much as when I was exploring Intel Core Ultra at CES 2024. And I can't wait to review it to see if we're matching performance with innovation. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, but again, the G14, G16, those are the big differences. We now have OLED displays on both laptops. Now, one laptop that I'm really looking forward to is the HP Omen Transcend 14. Reason I skipped over the Strix SCAR is because it's just a refresh in the components. Not a huge deal in my opinion, but still a great laptop to come. But the HP Omen Transcend 14, Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, RTX 4060 to 4070. First time that I've ever seen an HP Omen 14 inch model available. This is a big deal and it was beautiful. Looking at that one at CES 2024, I wasn't even sure I would see something like that. And then I go to this HP HyperX event and it's just sitting there like ready to be checked out. I just, I was floored, I was so excited. 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, 100% DCI-P3 OLED display. To me, that is the competition for these two laptops. Watch out, these two laptops need to watch out because <laughs> What HP possibly pulled off was a industry upset for Legion and Asus. Time will tell. I'm excited to review it, check it out. The MSI Prestige 16 AI OLED is basically the more affordable version of the creator, okay? So you're gonna have still all the same great features, AI, OLED, RTX 4060 or 4070, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD. It's gonna be a little bit more budget friendly compared to that creator. Still gonna have basically everything except just bigger GPUs and um, more capable like the uh, Quadro series for like 3D modeling. So it's just a little bit more basic version. Don't go. We need to do some massaging. Wait, what then? We need to massage that like button because people smash it. They're crazy people. We massage like buttons around here. So massage that like button. Consider subscribing, okay? Keep coming back, great content here. Would love to have you as a subscriber. It'd be amazing, thank you so much. And then also links in the description below this video if you wanna make a purchase that does support the channel. It makes a huge difference around here to paying my video editor and feeding all the crazy children I raise around this house. Lastly, if you want to know more about any specific computer, I've done full reviews on 80% of the laptops in this lineup. So definitely head on over to my channel, check those out and consider checking out the color accuracy tech terms playlist so you can learn more about color accuracy in your laptop. I will see you here in the next video.